Hello guys and welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be working with a library known as To Recreate. To Recreate is made by Apple and it is to simplify the development of custom machine learning models. You don't have to be a machine learning expert to add recommendation, object detection, image classification to our application. The entire point of To Recreate is to process huge data set. By huge, I mean billions of data points with millions of features. This is why it is so fascinating and we'll see in next few minutes. This library is not focused on algorithm specific design. It is machine learning with task focused design. Now let's see what is meant by that. What we usually do is we train our data on a specific algorithm, right? But in to recreate, suppose our task is to classify or classification or regression, whatever it is. What we do is tell to recreate that our task is classification or regression. And here is the data. Go choose the model which will work best with the data that I've provided. Now what to recreate will do is go through a bunch of different options and find the best model that will be best for our needs. Even you can specify a model which is already there in to recreate library. It has also custom models like recommendation system, text classification, etc. Now let's see its advantages. To recreate is easy to use as it focuses on tasks instead of algorithms as we discussed before. Then it has a visual inbuilt support. What we usually do is use matplotlib, seaborn or plotly for a data visualization. But in to recreate everything is present in single library. Next flexible. As you can see it supports text, images, audio, video and sensor data. It means that we can use any of this data to train our machine learning model. Fast and scalable. It works with large data set on single machine. And we'll see later how it does so. Ready to deploy. This means that we can use them in our application specifically for, for any iOS devices. Now whatever we have discussed, let's see through a use case. Guys, make sure that you make new conda environment or virtual environment for to recreate as it is recommended by developers. I'll be using Google Colab for now. Now before we start, we need to install to recreate. To install to recreate, we have to write not pip install to recreate and wait for it to get installed. Now once it is installed, you have to import it. To import, we have to write import to recreate as tc. TC is nothing but aliases for to recreate and I'll execute it. As you can see it is properly installed. Now to see inside the directory what is present in to recreate we write dir of TC. As you can see there are various models like classifier, clustering, then decision tree classifier, regression, image classifier, label propagation. As you can see there are various machine learning algorithms inside to recreate. Now let's work with the data set. Today I'll be working with simple data set which is iris data set. If you guys don't know about iris data set, it contains three classes of 50 instances each. Where each class refers to a type of iris plant. We are given four features of that plant. Those are sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. And our work is to classify them into three species. Now to import our data set we write df that is nothing but our data frame is equal to tc. It has an inbuilt method known as sframe. And in a second we'll know what is sframe. And here's the link for data set. As you can see our data frame is ready. And if we see our head part. Now when we see our head part of our data frame we can see our tabular structure. Now if we want to see the type of data frame we write type. Now you can see to recreate it, it is nothing but a sframe. Now sframe is nothing but a scalable data frame. You can see in the documentations here, it is mentioned. As frame means scalable data frame, a tabular column mutable data frame object that can scale to a big data. The data in S frame is stored in column wise and stored on a persistent storage to avoid being constrained by memory size. Persistent storage is nothing but any data storage device that retains data after power of the device is shut off. For example, disk, hard drive or SSD. The main takeaway from this is that S frame can store a huge data not only in RAM but also on disk. Now when we talk about pandas data frame what it does let's compare them. I'll write data frame of pandas for that I have to import pandas right. So I'll be importing pandas. 
as you can see pandas is successfully imported now let's read our csv pandas dot read read csv i'll pass that the same link now if we see the info of uh, data frame of pandas we can see that it uses some amount of memory it might be small in this use case but when the data increases exponentially or, or the count of data is in millions pandas is not a good choice then we have to use something known as s frame which is scalable frame so this was difference between pandas data frame and uh, s frame that is nothing but scalable data frame now let's visualize our data that is stored in our s frame and for to recreate it is one of its feature to visualize now let's see now simple way of doing is c tc that is nothing but aliases for to recreate dot if i write visualization dot let's see we have this many options to visualize our data now if i want scatter plot as we know for scatter plot we have to pass x and y let's pass those as you can see we are getting some kind of documentation for it and you can see they are expecting x and y as the parameters now let's pass them now what i'll pass is sepal length i have passed sepal length as x and i'll pass sepal width as y as you can see we are getting some kind of visualization and this is nothing but a scatter plot for sepal length and sepal width i'll pass x label as sepal length and y label as sepal width i have passed them now let's see and execute as you can see we are getting a useful scatter plot between sepal length and sepal width what we generally used to do is like import matplotlib and cbonds to visualize our data but in to recreate everything is there in itself now if we press here we can see that we can even save this image and if i want even i can open this in a new tab as you can see now let's see what df.plot does With single line of code, we are getting so much information about each column, like the distribution, then descriptive statistics of each column. And even for target column, we are getting some amount of information like the frequency, the number of unique values, then count, etc. Now, if we go back and see what all visualizations are available, what I have to write tc.visualization. You can see there are many visualization available and we can use as per our needs. Now let's see some basic stuff with our scalable data frame. Let's see what it offers. We can see we can add column then we can add columns, append column names. Let's see what column name returns. As you can see, we are getting names of columns from our data set where these are nothing but my independent features and my species is my dependent feature. Now let's see more stuff. Now what value underscore counts returns is the number of times the unique value is repeated. Now these operations seem similar to pandas data frame, right? Now let's see the shape of our data. As you can see, we have 150 rows and five columns. And this is also similar to our pandas data frame. Now let's see what scalable frame offers. As you can see, we can drop duplicates, we can drop NAN values, then we can export in JSON format, then we can read CSV, there is a random split for train and testing purpose. There are many features that Scalable Frame offers, right? Now let's create our model. Now to create our model, you know, right, we have to divide our data in training and testing purpose. Similarly, we can do it here also. For doing that, let's see what we have to write. Now, first thing we have to do is give our independent features and those are my sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width for this data set. So I'll just write it. Now here I've given my independent features and now I'll just execute it. Now we'll train our model. Now what we'll do is divide our data for training and testing purpose. So see what I've written, train data and test data. Then from data frame, I'm doing a random split of 80 for training. I am considering 80% of my data and for testing the rest 20%. For seed value you can give any number you like. I'll just execute it. If I go and see the shape of my train data, let's see what it returns. As you can see we got our training shape as 117 cross 5. That means we have 117 rows and 5 columns. Now let's see the shape of test data. Now we have successfully divided our data for training and testing. Now it's time to create a model. Now let's see what this line says. As we know, this is classification task, right? Now what I'm saying is from to recreate, it is a classification task. So I need a classifier and I'm creating my model. 
so from to recreate i'm telling it's a classifier and i'm telling it to create on this train data i'm giving target as species on this as my independent features now guys let us understand this line one more time now here i'm telling my to recreate that this is a classification problem and you have to create a model on the data that i've provided and in this case i have provided my train data where my dependent feature is species where my independent features are this features above that i have specified so when we are new to machine learning we always get confused for this data which machine learning model should i choose but when you work with to recreate this won't happen i'll just execute this as you can see to recreate goes through bunch of different options and selects model for a data that we have provided now you can see the to recreate have went through boosted tree classifier this are nothing but boosting techniques then random forest classifier then it goes through decision tree classifier and finally to recreate have went through logistic regression isn't it amazing guys you just have to write one line of code and everything is in front of your screen now let's analyze the result that we have got now first model that to recreate have worked on is boosted tree classifier as you can see it have trained model on 11 record but we saw that our training data was 117 so what happens is as you can see 5% of data is used for validation if you guys don't want you can set validation underscore set is equal to none now let's see what boosted trees have given us now it has done 10 iterations in each iteration you can see the training accuracy have increased and after that it remains constant and even for validation accuracy we even get log loss with this isn't it amazing guys everything is there now similarly it goes through random forest classifier with 111 records and you can see the training accuracy after each iteration increases similarly it goes through decision tree then logistic regression as you can see after each iteration the training accuracy increases so model selection based on validation accuracy we get accuracy for each model as you can see but after that to recreate will automatically select a best model for us as you can see it have selected boosted tree classifier based on validation set performance now if we see the summary of a model as you can see we get number of trees that it have worked on then max tree depth then training accuracy validation accuracy with loss function everything that you want is there in front of your screen now after training a model what we usually do is test a model on our testing data let's do so what we'll do is model dot evaluate on test data that i had created before now with one line of code you see what you are getting you are getting accuracy then auc as you can see we are getting a confusion matrix like what was the target label and what our model have predicted and with count for that then we get fn score then we get log loss precision recall almost everything guys now if you guys know about false positive rate true positive rate then you will know for every threshold value it have given its false positive rate and true positive rate with this you can plot auc and roc curve with this now what we'll do let's store this in one of our variable and see what type it is as you can see it is in form of dictionary so what we can write is eval of accuracy as you can see we get accuracy that we have seen already this accuracy no not this this accuracy even we can see eval for auc if you want to be very specific now after evaluating let's test on a data so what we'll write model dot predict on test data now you'll get your predicted labels so guys isn't it amazing like within few lines of code you can extract so much of information from it now guys if you want to predict a single value there is a different way of doing it so what we have to do is give values in form of key value pairs so i'll just write them in key value pairs so as you can see i have provided a dictionary for my independent features where sepal length is 4 sepal width is 3 and so on if if i just execute it and this is in form of dictionary as we have to pass in key value pairs now what i'll do is make this dictionary in s frame because for predicting we need to pass an s frame that is scalable data frame so there is a way of doing it now as you can see we have provided s frame and the key here is data and the values are the values that i have provided here i'll just execute it 
and let's see as you can see this is nothing but my s frame where data is nothing but the key and and values are my independent features values now we'll pass this s frame in our predict function and let's see what species we'll get as you can see our model have successfully predicted that it is an setosa now we can even get the probability of saying that it is setosa for that we have to write model dot classifier now even we are getting the probability of saying that it is setosa as you can see it is 0 0.94 now earlier we, are, we had provided that it is just a classification problem right and it went through bunch of different models now what we'll do is give a mo model manually and we'll be giving k nearest neighbor which is also used for classification now the way of doing is tc dot as you can see there is a nearest neighbor classifier and i'm telling it to create a model for us on test data te test data where target is my species and features are my features and i'll store it in a variable as you can see it has successfully trained a model on our test data now let's see the summary of a model so guys i made a mistake what i had to write is i have to train a model on a training data right so what i'll do is fix my error as you can see it have trained a model on 117 records with features distance now if we write kn in model dot distance you can see that it uses euclidean distance in its backend now what I'll do is I'll evaluate a model on our test data. Now let's see the results of our evaluated model. We are getting accuracy as 0 0.93 and pretty much the same thing that we have discussed before like confusion matrix and this is giving me a good accuracy than previous boosted trees. Now what I'll do is predict my test data with our model. As you can see we are getting our labels. Now guys I have to save our model for this use case I'll be saving the first model that is boosted tree classifier just to show you guys now to save our model we just have to write model dot save the model which is a model and in and with what name you have to save your model we just have to write that model dot pickle i'll run it as this i'll execute that and to load our model there is inbuilt function in to recreate now let's see what is it so the function name is load model and what file that we have specified and i'll store it in mod now let's see it if if it works mod dot predict as you can see guys it is predicting the output now to conclude this video this library can have a lot of potential in machine learning and deep learning industry since not many people know about this library community of it is comparatively small so what you guys think do let us know in our comment section I hope you guys have learned something new today. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you guys have any issue do let us know in our comment section. I'll see you all in the next video till then bye bye.